Y'all turn to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. That shouldn't be too difficult to find. <clears throat> I'm going to read you the Charles Schultz philosophy. Who knows who Charles Schultz is? Right. The creator of peanuts. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to actually answer the questions. Just think about it. Um, and you'll get the point. Six questions. Name the five wealthiest people in the world. Name the last five Heisman Trophy winners. Hmm. Name the last five winners of the Miss America pageant. Name the ten people who have won the Nobel or Pulitzer Prize. Name the last decade's worth of World Series winners. These are hard questions, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> the point is, none of us remember the headliners of yesterday. These are no second-rate achievers. They are the best in their fields, but the applause dies. Mm. Awards tarnish. Yeah. Achievements are forgotten. Accolades and certificates are buried with their owners. Mm. Here's another quiz. Five questions. List a few teachers who aided you in your journey through school. Mm. Mm. Name three friends who have helped you through a difficult time. Name five people who have taught you something worthwhile. Mm. Think of a few people who have made you feel appreciated and special. Mm. Think of five people you enjoy spending time with. Mm. That's an easier set of questions. Yes, amen. The people who make a difference in your life are not the ones with the most credentials. Mm the most money or the most awards, they simply are the ones who care the most. That's good. Mm. <clears throat> I heard a statement one time that someone made, and I don't even remember who made it, but they said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's good. And we spend a lot of time, effort, and money on acquiring credentials or trying to become the best in our field or whatever, or trying to reach a certain level. And it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What does matter is how we care about other people. Amen. And uh, just like we just experienced in this test, uh, I don't know who the last five Heisman Trophy winners were, but I can name you uh, the school teacher that had a big impact in my life. And that was years ago. Long time ago. I could name you five people who have had a large impact in my life and still do. Amen. They're a whole lot more important to me than uh, whoever won that trophy or Amen. whatever it was. Amen. And by the way, I have trophies, or I did have. I don't even know if I still have them or not because they wind up in a box. Did, did yours wind up in a box, or do you have them in the front somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> right there in the foyer of your home where everybody, you know, as soon as they walk in, oh. <laughs> One, one trophy. <laughs> great selling Yeah. And so those things don't really matter. Uh, except for just a few minutes right after you got it in your hand. Mm. But yet those people that made a difference in our life for good, we will never forget them. Mm. Um, people will probably forget the words that you use, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Mm. And again, our vocabulary might be broad and 
wondrously astounding, but if our heart is not loving, Paul said, it don't matter. Right. It, 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 it ain't worth a nickel. Mm. So, I just thought that was good. I want to read it to you. It Are you there in Matthew chapter 5? Amen. <clears throat> How bright is your light? Mm. We're going to read um, in, in starting in verse 14, but light is something that we we can't live without and function in a normal, productive manner. Light shows us what we need to see in order to do what we need to do. Light exposes what darkness hides. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That's what Jesus said, Amen. So Matthew chapter 5, look in verse 14. Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's pray. Father, I do thank You for Your Word and the direction that You give us. And Lord, it's evident right here in this book of Matthew that the light that we shine for You is highly important. And Father, I pray that You would open our ears and our hearts to see this tonight and to make a difference in our thinking so that when we leave, it will make a difference in our actions. Lord, I thank You for it. Please help me to say what I should so that I might deliver Your message to Your people tonight. And I thank You for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus proclaims that we as Christians, or Christ followers, are the light of the world. But what is it that our light is supposed to do? <clears throat> to say that it's to shine in the darkness of this world isn't clear enough. It's, true. it's kind of a vague uh, comment. Yeah. It leaves us with great uncertainty of what we're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> Going to church is not what this is talking about. <clears throat> the light's already on here. Yeah. Um, so there's no real need to be shining a bright light right here. <clears throat> no one carries a lantern inside of a house where there's plenty of light already. Mm-hmm. Our light is simply doing everything that we do under the influence of the Holy Spirit and biblical principles. Mm. The things that I choose to do or not do. Yes, amen. The reaction I have in tough circumstances. Mm. The things I talk about or not talk about is how we shine our light. I would like to do a little experiment. So, Brother Phil, would you turn those lights off right there for just a second? This is good. <clears throat> now, look at your Bible. Wilhelmina has quite a bit of door light coming in there. She might can still read. Or if she's on her iPad, it lights up there. And uh, I see Jenny's glint, glint, uh, uh, face glowing over there too. But if you have a Bible or a songbook maybe, look at it. Can you read it? Brother Tommy, can you read your Bible? Yes. You I can? Have, I read that light. Brenda, you can read yours? Can you read it well? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, I'm looking at mine, um, and without my glasses, with my glasses, it's I can just barely make it out. Um, let's see. Brenda, you said you can barely read yours. I have a flashlight right here, and this represents 
uh, a Christian who is supposed to be shining the light, right? Right. Okay, so I'm going to help Miss Brenda read her Bible here. Does that help? No, it's shining there. A little bit of... Okay, very little bit of light there. And you know what the problem with this flashlight is? It's got black tape across the top of it. What in the world is that for? What good was I to help Miss Brenda read her Bible? Brother Phil, turn the light back on there, please. <clears throat> None. It was absolutely worthless. I have it. I've got batteries in it and everything. The, the, the little bulb in there works just like it's supposed to. The problem is I've got black tape over it. It's worthless. Jesus said that our light ought not to be hidden under a bushel. Right. A bushel, if you don't know what that is, is a container that you put beans and peas and okra and tomatoes in. Okay? And it's it, if you put a, a lamp or a lantern underneath it, it isn't going to be able to shine outside of it much better than this flashlight shine, shine through that little crack where I didn't get covered good enough. Yeah. That's how we shine as a Christian. Mm. Monday through Saturday. Mm. Why is that? <clears throat> when the light was off, I thought about getting some paper and covering that door right there so that it would be good and dark in here and ask everybody to get up and walk around. Mm. <laughs> so that you could go home with a bruise on your shin and remember this message tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> but light's important. Yes, it, it shines in our path so that we can see where to go and where not to go. Yes. Both are important. Amen. If we don't know that this path over here is not good and we walk down that path, something bad's going to happen. Right? Right? So the light helps to shine in our path. In, in the book of Psalms, the Bible says that uh, thy word is a lamp unto my path. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but me and my brothers, we used to go roaming in the woods all the time. We thought that we were Tarzan's descendants. We climbed trees, we built tree houses. We wanted to spend the night in the tree houses, but our parents wouldn't let us. And we'd stay out there till it was dark. And I'm telling you, it's much easier to run through the woods at full blast when it's daytime than it is when it starts getting dark. If you've ever caught a palmetto stem between your toes, that ain't fun. So the light helps. By the way, there are people in your circle of life that you associate with on a regular basis that need the light. Amen. Amen. And the only way that they're going to see that light and have that light in their life is from your brightness around them and on them. Mm. There's a problem there, though. Remember earlier I said, light exposes what the darkness hides. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not comfortable. Amen. It's not comfortable for me, it isn't comfortable for you, and it isn't comfortable for those people that live close around in your proximity. Mm -hmm. Because we all have sin in our life at some point or another, at some level or another. Right. <clears throat> when the light begins to shine in our life or theirs through us, sometimes that becomes uncomfortable. Mm. Sometimes it can cause a little bit of friction. But that's okay. We're not just light. We're also salt. Amen. Sometimes salt burns. Yeah. It does flavor the food, and that's good. This morning I made my oatmeal. I always put salt in my oatmeal, but for some reason this morning I forgot to. 
And it just wasn't as good as it normally was. And I was halfway through eating it when it occurred to me that I forgot to put the salt in there. And I thought, should I go get the salt and put it in there? And I thought, no, I'll just I'll push through here. And I did. But it is good. It does flavor. And that's what we're supposed to do, but it also burns. Sometimes it's necessary. I know I personally do not like conflict. I don't like to have to uh, enter into a conversation that I know could go awry. But sometimes we have to. Sometimes we have to confront situations. Sometimes we need to stand up for the for the Bible and 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 take a stand. Yeah. And that is shining a light. That's what we're supposed to do wherever we go. So that, he also says, uh, that they may see our good works. Why? To glorify our Father which is in heaven. Our good works are important. Our good works do not save us. But our good works shines a light. Right. So if we're going to shine our light, we have to do the good works. By the way, these good works is a broad list. I do think that probably we've shined the brightest when we react properly under pressure. More so than when we're just going through the ease and the comforts of life. But when we get that pink slip at work or the boss calls and says so and so can you come to my office Mm -hmm. Jeanette and I was looking through something the other day we found a list of comments that Preacher McCormick used to make one of them was he would call on the phone and one of the first things that he would say is are you by yourself (laughs) and we knew exactly what that meant He asked the question because he was fixing to get on to us about something and he didn't want other people in there so that they could hear what was going on or whatever. Or he would say, are you aware? And then tell us whatever we was probably aware of already and failed to do something about. But he would have these comments. And so when that boss calls your name and says, um, Miss Vicky, would you please come to the office or to my office? And everybody's looking at you. And they're watching. And then they're watching to see how you react when you come back out. Yeah. Then they want to come over there and start drilling you. So what did what, what he say? Tell me about it. <clears throat> and how you react to that. These difficult circumstances really is what shows our true colors. You know, you don't know a person until you tell them no. And you're just like that. I'm like that. When something doesn't go my way, how I respond or react to that is important because people are watching. Everything that you and I do is noticed by someone, good or bad. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 says, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Now, what he did right there was he, he he told us about two categories of people. Not three. Mm-hmm. Two. And you and I will fall into one or the other. We are either gathering for Him or we're scattering. We're not in the middle. We're not idle. We're not doing nothing, 
We are either going in forward or we're going in reverse. There's no neutral here when it comes to shining our light. The way you act, the way you react, the things you say, the things you don't say is either gathering for the kingdom or scattering. Today, when you leave church, <clears throat> how will you shine for Jesus? You're going to go somewhere. By the way, you, you need to shine for Jesus in your, ho- in your house, Amen. your home. Amen. <clears throat> you will lead the people in your home and influence them more than anybody else. How do you want to influence them? What direction do you want to take them? you want to pull them towards Jesus or you want to shove them away? Mm. I know a young man who has... I don't know if he's saved or not, but I know this. He acts like he's not and he says he's not and he says he doesn't want to have anything to do with God mm. and he grew up in church. The people in his home did not shine a bright light for Jesus. And I believe pushed him away from a right relationship with Jesus. So we're not disengaged in our home when it comes to shining our light. It's not like we have to put on our Christian armor when we walk out the door. We have to have it when we're still inside the house. Amen. <clears throat> what can you do to be a light in the darkness tomorrow? The people that you associate with, either in your home or at the store, Wherever. What can you do in your circle? We all have different circles. We all have a different list of people that we associate with. What can you do to shine for Him? Pass out a track to that person. Tell them God bless you. Tell them that you're thankful that God... Gave us a beautiful day. You know, everybody likes to talk about the weather, yeah. but very few want to bring God into it. He's the one that made it. Right, amen. <clears throat> How can you shine a brighter light for Him? Shining His light means turning ours off. Mm. You can't shine for Him and brag about yourself at the same time. Mm-hmm. John said, I must decrease and he must increase. And Paul said, I die daily. Turn turn to Luke chapter 9. <clears throat> Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. Jesus again said, If any man will come after me, Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Self-denial is a must when it comes to shining the light for Jesus. Again, if you're going to shine His light, you're going to have to turn yours off. That's self-denial. What we want, the comforts that we would prefer, many times dim our Christian light. It's true. Because of what we want. Yes, we have to come out of our comfort zone many times in order to shine a bright light for Jesus. <clears throat> it's critically important if we're going to shine bright for Him.
Let's pray. Father, thank You for giving us Your Word. Lord, I especially thank You for these verses that You've shown to us tonight that make it very clear that we need to be shining our light for You. Lord, I pray that You would help me to turn my light off so that I can shine Your light in the darkness of this world. Lord, You put people in our path every day that need to hear about Jesus. They need to know that we love You and that You love them. Lord, help us to shine for You like we ought to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and turn to